Uh, good evening. I'd like to call the August 7, 2012 Council meeting to order and ask everyone to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I would ask the clerk to call the roll, please. Commissioner Rankin? Here. Commissioner Barnett? Here. Commissioner Newstead? Here. Commissioner Durkin? Commissioner Waldeck? Here. Commissioner Schnell? Here. Mayor Tully? Uh, we have a quorum. Uh, I would now like to go to hear a motion from uh, Council for the approval of the minutes of our last Council meeting. So moved. Second. Uh, are there any additions, corrections to it? Commissioner Newstead? Commissioner no. Rankin? Commissioner Waldeck? Commissioner Barnett, and I have none. Uh, can I have a voice vote of approval for the minutes? Aye. 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 <laughs> All right. I do have a proclamation um, that I am going to read, and it's my pleasure. Um, whereas every day is a Sunday opened on August the 15th, 1992, featuring Sherman's Ice Cream of South Haven, Michigan, and whereas every day is a Sunday was the first location in Illinois to offer Sherman's Ice Cream, and whereas Every Day is a Sunday was founded by Stan and Diane Urban and their two daughters, Anastasia and Amanda. And whereas the name Every Day is a Sunday was created by Diane. And whereas Every Day is a Sunday has been located at 990 Warren Avenue since June 2004. And whereas Every Day is a Sunday has employed over 400 youths in the 20 years. Now, therefore, I, Marilyn J. Schnell, Mayor Pro Tem of the Village of Downers Grove, do hereby congratulate Every Day is a Sunday on their 20th anniversary and do hereby proclaim Monday, August the 13th, as every day is a Sunday day in the village of Downers Grove, dated the 7th day of August, 2012, at Downers Grove, Illinois. And I'd like to ask Diane and Stan and their daughters um, to come up. <clears throat> and I think it's amazing anytime you have any business, you're out for 20 years. And I Comments, general comments on matters not appearing on tonight's agenda. And Mr. Casa from the EDC is here. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, members of the council, I'm not sure, should I refer to you as acting mayor? You can call me anything you'd like. You know, <laughs> Mrs. Schnell, acting Mr. Mayor Schnell, and members of the council. Whatever it is. Michael Casa, president of the Downers Grove Economic Development Corporation, 2001 Butterfield Suite 120 here in Downers Grove. As you no doubt, no, from, um, from just reading the papers, uh, the, the uh, competition for Class A office tenants is, ex is very competitive, um, especially since the city of Chicago seems to have made it a, uh, a goal of theirs to uh, uh, get uh, uh, these office tenants to go back or go into the city. And so uh, when we have a success, we'd like to celebrate it. Uh, as I reported last week, Invesco Power Shares is coming to Downers Grove. The firm is a world leader in investment management. It is a division of Invesco Limited, which is based in Atlanta, Georgia, and operates in 20 countries. Invesco Power Shares has announced that it is relocating their two area offices to create a new division headquarters at 3500 Lacey Road in Downers Grove. The company will lease 90,000 square feet in that building 
300 employees will be relocated to the company's new Downers Grove facility. I want to congratulate Hamilton Partners, which secured this tenant. As you may recall, late last year, Hamilton Partners secured the lease at 3500 Lacey Road for the new corporate headquarters for Javi Global Solutions. And again, congratulations to Beth Simmons and the whole team at Hamilton. Make sure to pass it on to Gary and Phil. And that's all I have. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. We're very happy to have them. Mr. Robel. Good evening, Acting Mayor Snell and Commissioners. Uh, my name is Bill Robel. I live at 7800 Queens Court in Downers Grove. And I'm here tonight to present a petition that was circulated by myself and has been signed by 24 homeowners on Queens Court. Uh, on the section of Queens Court between Sherwood and Manning Road. Uh, there's a total of 29 homes. Uh, the five missing were either non-concurrent or they were on vacation. And I couldn't get their signatures, but everyone that signed this is conversant with the petition and why I'm here. Uh, if you would bear with me a minute, I'd like to summarize it. You have a copy before you with, with various exhibits. And the, uh, the subject of this petition is to amending the traffic calming plans for Queens Court planned for building as part of a reconstruction of Queens Court for the summer of 2012. It simply says, we, the undersigned, respectfully request that you, the Village Council, instruct the engineers and Public Works Department to revise the design traffic calming proposed and plan for the intersection of Queens Court and Sherwood. The ball bounce plan and engineer for Queens Court do not address the needs of the residents living between Manning Road and Sherwood Court. Speeding, 34.9 miles per hour average are on record with the public works. This, it is documented as of May, of May 2010 for vehicles traveling north and south past 7800 Queens Court in response to three traffic calming petitions which were filed with the village traffic engineer on July 22nd, 2009. These petitions have been pending action before the Transportation and Parking Commission pending funding, et cetera, since July of 2009. Uh, in the uh, packet or the petition, we have uh, the village traffic counting presentation, August 14th of 2002, states that 14 inch and 12, or 12, 14 foot and 12 foot humps change the speed the most, and second would be a 22 uh, foot table with no, no mention of bulb outs. We, the undersigned residents of Queens Court, request the following traffic calming to be implemented at 7800 Queens Court North towards Sherwood Court. A, a speed hump or a speed table, or B, a curb wiggle from 7800 Queens Court North, similar to the wiggle that currently exists from 7811, 7812 South to Manning Road. The wiggle South to Queens Court South on Queens Court from 78 to 12 does have a, a speeding vehicle. A speed does work since the speeding vehicles hit their brakes when they get to this wiggle. Uh, I can tell you that for watching it many, many times. Uh, we, the undersigned, submit this appeal for your help <coughs> since we believe that it would save valuable tax dollars to do the traffic calming properly during the reconstruction of Queens Court. And attached is the exhibit, uh, uh, page one, which has the signatures, and page two, and page uh, three. So you have a, a complete uh, listing of all the uh, signers, signatures, I should say. The other exhibit, which is extremely important, is the exhibit which shows the speed of traffic it was measured in May of 2010. They didn't put the exact date, and I don't recall the exact date. But it shows that there's an 85 percent tile speed in your area as follows. Queens Court from Manning Road to Roar Drive, which is about a quarter of a block, that's 25.944 miles per hour. From Queens Court to Roar Drive to Sherwood Court, it's been recorded at 34.6 miles an hour. In the north from Queens Court, to Sherwood, it's 32.41. It mentions also that the um, Queens, the traffic coming in at the uh, intersection of Manning 
in Roar. There are 650 vehicles during that study period from Queens Court North to uh, Sherwood Court, or from Roar North to Sherwood Court was 305 vehicles, and Queens Court North from Sherwood Court to North End was 245. So you can see the majority of the traffic has gone forward up north of uh, Sherwood Court just by that particular study. Only some of them have returned uh, turned off on Sherwood. Also, you have the correspondence from Public Works from Dora Farah uh, outlining, saying, accepting the traffic petition dated July 24, 2009. These three petitions were generated by Dan Kasher, uh, Colleen DeRosa, and myself. And there's a total of 19 persons that signed that, those three petitions. Uh, and then there's a copy of the traffic calming presentation, just a cover page, which I'm sure you can access if you're interested. It was dated August 14, 2002. In there it confirms that the speed humps are the most effective form of uh, speed control. And it also mentions that narrowings are the least eff effective. And uh, there's another page which supports that. <coughs> so I uh, wanted to appear to you today because I believe that the Public Works Department and the village employees have been sincere in their efforts to uh, put traffic calming into the, the redevelopment or the reconstruction of the Queen's Court. Uh, I have examined the one uh, bulb out that was installed as the first part of the project on um, Marie and uh, yeah, Marie and uh, Nottingham, and it projects out, but there's still two, two and a half lanes, and I've seen people use the, the open lanes just as they would if it was, there were three lanes there. So uh, I don't want to go any further than this, except I do, in behalf of my neighbors, all 24 homes, 48 adults who signed this particular petition. Uh, and the people who signed it back in July of 2009 asking for traffic calming. Uh, somehow our original petition has, has gotten uh, tabled and uh, traffic calming because of budgetary constraints has, has taken a second or third chair in as far as priorities on, on the village uh, standpoint or in the village point of view. However, I do appeal to you in the way of budgeting and, and being responsible fiduciaries of the public funds, that this would be the time when the least amount of public funds would be uh, expended. There's minimal or no cost for just an extra uh, amount of, uh, of uh, asphalt. So uh, on, that, on that appeal, I would uh, ask you to probably to revisit this, please, and ask the village staff, the village engineers, to revisit it at this time while there's still time to make a un inexpensive, I should say, change. And I thank you for listening to my presentation. Thank you. And my thank neighbors, you for thank you too. I mean, some of them are watching me tonight too, so. <laughs> thanks for the petition. Thanks for the, uh, you sent us some photos over the weekend too. Yes, I did. Uh, and thank you for those. Thank you. So, um, does staff have any comments or you did get a copy of the petition? Uh, we'll, we do have a copy and we'll make sure we get the original tonight and we'll take it under due consideration. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Does okay. council have any questions, Mr. Robo? Thank you very much for coming, Bob. Thank you. Bill, not Bob. Anyone else have any comments or questions they would like to ask the council? Seeing none, we do not have an active agenda this evening. Um, so we will go to the first reading and I will turn it over to our village manager. We <coughs> need to vote on the consent agenda. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I apologize. Um, I too fast. Um, can I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? Move to approve tonight's consent agenda as presented. Second. A second. Uh, right, uh, you, we need a voice vote, or not a voice vote, a uh, roll call. Commissioner Barnett? Aye. Aye. Commissioner Newstep? Aye. Commissioner Rankin? Aye. Commissioner Waldeck? Aye. Mayor Schnell? I mentioned Gary's hand is the I apologize. I was so involved in the traffic calming that, that Mr. Robo that I just went right over the consent agenda. We did have a consent agenda. We do not have an active agenda. <laughs> um, we will now go to our first reading. And thank you, Barb. Um, Barb, gosh, April. Um, our first reading, I will turn it over to the village manager. 
Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Only two items on tonight's first reading agenda. The first is consideration of an extension of a, a final plan development amendment for plan development number 31, which is on uh, Lacey Road, the new home of Invesco. And I will ask our community development director, Tom Dabreiner, to present background information on this item. Good evening. That actually is half the presentation. Yes. <laughs> Uh, there is an ordinance that has been prepared to grant a one-year extension to plan development ordinance number uh, the ordinance is number 5205 to permit the construction of two five-story additions to the existing parking garage and a construct and construction of a new six level parking garage at 3500 Lacey Road which we just heard about <clears throat> um, almost one year ago on August 16th the village council approved a plan development uh, amendment Plan Development 31 uh, for the, the uh, uh, project just mentioned. Construction has yet to begin and the petitioner has requested, which is Hamilton Partners, has requested uh, a one-year extension. Now this falls under Section 28.1609B2 of the Zoning Ordinance and that specifies uh, specific time limits with respect to the plan development approvals um, and one-year discretions are at uh, one-year discretions. One-year indiscretions? No, one-year, um, I apologize. One-year extensions may be granted uh, at the sole discretion of uh, the council. Uh, staff is recommending approval. Uh, just to remind everyone what we're looking at, that is the um, site location right off of Lacey Road. Uh, there's an aerial of the existing structures. Um, and if we uh, take a moment to just kind of highlight the existing structures and lay over the, uh, the plan, we can highlight the construction. Uh, that's the roadway that, uh, or the uh, driveways that would be on site. Uh, there would be an addition to the southern portion of the, um, of the uh, existing parking deck, the northern portion, and then the new uh, six-story deck on the north end. Uh, of the property on the north side of the property. Uh, staff is recommending approval. Uh, we do have representatives from Hamilton Partners tonight. Uh, if there are any questions, um, uh, otherwise, uh, oh look, there's even more. Let's see, there's some green space too. This is from the old uh, presentation a, a year ago. And then that is um, uh, what it uh, could look like with the new six-story structure. Uh, uh, added to the site. Be happy to try to answer any questions. Uh, does anyone in the audience have any questions? Seeing none, I just have a comment. Hamilton um, Partners, in the um, print, the, in the letters that they sent, it actually was asking for a two-year extension. We are not yeah. capable of extending it for two years. We can only extend it for one year. Correct. Correct. By one year extensions. Okay. Right. Just wanted to make sure that, that was kind of clear for the rest of the council. Does anyone on the council have any comments? Seeing none, thank you. Huh? Just, just, oh, sorry. I, I just I have no problem with this and, and think it's appropriate. I'm just reminding everybody, I think that this was presented originally as a likely happenstance. If I remember correctly, the purpose of originally amending this and seeking this approval a year ago was due to the substantial change, likely change in usage of the building, right? Correct. So, but the timing of that was a little bit of a chicken and an egg thing, and we were trying to set up to, to accommodate that different usage down the road. Everybody knowing at the time that that was very undefined as to when that might be. So I think, uh, obviously, it seems like everybody's fine with it, but I think it's total keeping with the conversations from a year ago as well. And it's not inconsistent <clears throat> with what's been done throughout the village over the years either. Correct. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. The next item. The next and final item on tonight's first reading agenda is the award of contract uh, for the Elm Street Storm Sewer Improvement Project and Director Newland from Public Works is here to present this item. Good evening. A motion is requested to award a contract for the Elm Street Storm Sewer Improvement Project to Jay Congdon Sewer Service of Carroll Stream in the amount of $346,280. This project was included in the 2012 Community Investment Plan and includes the installation of a new storm sewer along Elm Street from Lincoln to Grant, as shown on this uh, location diagram here. This uh, block of Elm Street is poorly drained with runoff traveling along the sidewalks on both sides of the street. 
and during moderate rain events, it crosses Elm Street and causes yard flooding. The proposed improvements will effectively drain small to moderate size rain events and will provide residents with an opportunity to connect sump pumps and yard drains. Uh, we had two media neighborhood meetings as we developed these plans. They were de um, designed by staff in-house, and we will be having a third meeting if the project's approved with residents as, before we start construction. Uh, the placement of a concrete shoulder to replace the existing stone shoulder was included as an alternate bid, and because the base bid plus the alternate bid came in less than the budgeted amount, staff is recommending that both be awarded with this contract. We did advertise for bids, and on July 18th, we received eight bids. The low bidder is Jay Congdon Sewer Service, and this contractor received an excellent report card from the village for the 2010 water main improvement project. They finished the project on time and interacted very well with the public and with residents, and overall staff was very satisfied with their work. Uh, they also received good references from the Village of Lyle and the Village of Palatine on similar projects, and staff recommends award of the contract to Jay Congdon Sewer, and I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. Uh, does anyone in the audience have any questions or comments? <coughs> Would you come to the podium and give us your name and address, please? Thank you. I'm John Becker, 4540 Elm Street, Downers Grove. And um, Acting Mayor Chanel and Commissioners, I, first I'd like to thank you for putting this project on the front burner. Uh, we've suffered with a lot of flooding on Elm Street over the years. And uh, I also urge the approval of the concrete shoulder piece. So thank you very much. Great. Thank you. And thanks for, I know your community or your area has been at Coffee with Councils and not in our face, but at least have let us know what your problems have been over the years, and, and I think that's enabled this to move forward as quickly as possible. So, so thank you to your neighbors, too, for alerting us to your problems. Um, does anyone? Commissioner Neustadt? Thank you. This is kind of a question for you, Nan. I, I read here now that we're letting uh, neighbors, we have been connecting sump pumps and yard drains, and we've gone a couple of summers now with these kind of neighborhood connections. Have we experienced any positives or negatives, and are a lot of people connecting to these new projects when they uh, are allowed to we're seeing a pretty good amount of people making connections and we're also seeing a pretty good spin-off of cost share pro uh, projects as well where neighbors are working together putting in some private storm sewers that are connecting their backyards to these types of sewers uh, previously there weren't sewers for uh, the residents to connect to and now there are so we're seeing a uh, increase in our cost share program and also some sump pump connections and a decrease in a lot of the nuisance calls we had gotten in the past. Excellent. Thank you. Commissioner Reagan. Um, Manager Fieldman had explained this to me, but I think it would benefit those listening. What's the um, benefit of using the concrete gutter versus the um, gravel gutter? It provides a, a structure to the edges of the pavement. Um, right now, um, the loads that are put on the edge of the pavement don't have something to reinforce them. So it causes raveling and deterioration of the edges of the pavement faster. Um, this isn't what you think of as a gutter, but it provides the same structure as a gutter with that concrete ribbon along the sides. So it helps the long-term wear and maintenance of the pavement, and it also provides a harder, cleaner edge, easier to maintain. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We did that on Brookbank recently, mm -hmm. yes. too. Yeah. It's proved out to be you know, a really nice addition to that neighborhood as well. Okay, and I have nothing. I just think it's a great project. I'm happy that we've been being able to do it. So great, thank you. And that ends our first reading okay. tonight. Um, we are down to the May's report. I actually am the comment reliability report. I actually have two um, comments and announcements. Um, there will be a town hall meeting with comment, <clears throat> and it's scheduled for Thursday, September 20th, at 7 p.m. in the Recreation Center in Belmont. Um, representatives from ComEd will be there and they will be leading questions, comments, concerns, et cetera, et cetera. And it will be both a resident and a business um, meeting so that if there are businesses in town that are experiencing difficulties, they are invited to come to? Absolutely, yes. Okay. Um, well, it's different from the last meeting we had, so I think it's, it's good to get that information out to the businesses in town. Um, in addition, um, I actually asked the, the manager about this. As far as um, electrical ag aggregation goes, the new pricing will be going into effect in either late August or early September. So it will not be going into effect as of 
the 1st of August. So for those of you who are looking at your electric bills, wondering how you're going to pay them because of all the electricity we've used for um, air conditioning, you will start seeing relief towards the end of August or the beginning of September. And that is, uh, are you going to cover uh, the grade crossing, the railroad grade crossing, just to, as an announcement? Sure, for absolutely. Uh, we can cover that. There's going to be um, work done on the Washington Street Railroad crossing right outside of Village Hall here. Uh, starting on Thursday, going through the next week, it will be improvements to the grade crossing itself to make it smoother and function better. There will also be some village-related improvements in the shoulder areas around there to make pedestrian crossings a lot easier and safer. Uh, so a one-week construction period, the crossing will be closed that whole week. It starts on Thursday. And there will be signs detouring people down Main Street? or That is correct. Mm -hmm. um, we will have the detour route posted. We have the information also posted on our website. Um, so if you have any questions about detour routes, et cetera, that would be a good place to check. And as far as people <laughs> getting to the commuter parking lots at Village Hall, they're going to have to go down Main and come around? That's correct. They can uh, go uh, down Main or maybe somewhere down okay. Fairview and, and come we, back around the south side. give an information out or put things on their cars just so they understand that that's happening for the week? Uh, I, I, you know, let me check with uh, Director Newland on that uh, okay. question. We may have letters on Okay. I mean, just obviously, if you're trying to catch a train and you're running late, and all of a sudden you realize you can't get across Washington, you have to go not all the way around, but go around, go around. It, it could make you miss a train. So as, as long as people understand, it, that's great. Okay. Um, we are now to the attorney's report. Thank you. Only one item tonight. That's an ordinance authorizing an extension of a final plan development amendment for plan development number 31 for additions to the existing parking garage and the construction of a new six-level parking garage at 3500 Lacey Road. Thank you. Um, we are now at Council Member Reports and New Business. Commissioner, Commissioner Newstead. I have no new business, but a uh, quick report. Downtown Management Corporation uh, is hosting this month the historic photo tour. So you can take a walk down memory lane in beautiful downtown Downers Grove. Many of the shops and stores and restaurants have old historic photos in their windows to get a glimpse of what uh, used to be in those locations and what downtown Downers Grove used to look like. So. It's kind of a nice way to see some history of our village and uh, the heart of our downtown, the downtown. So that's all I have to make. And the Friday night car shows are continuing. Friday night car shows are continuing until uh, I think the end of this month. I don't have the actual date here. Oh, that's okay. Wait, August 31st is the last okay. one. And Farmers Market is doing really well. <laughs> Farmers Market is doing really well. It's going to be, I believe, the second week of October. Okay. No, I, it's, and the Fine Arts Festival is in September. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Great report. I can Thanks. keep going. But <laughs> <laughs> I know you can. <laughs> Commissioner Rankin. No report. Commissioner Waldeck. Uh, thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, I do have one item. We haven't met for a while, so uh, this is the first chance I had to share this with you. Uh, this comes from a missive from the uh, uh, Mayor's and Managers Conference. Uh, there is a survey, uh, an online survey, Metra's 2012 strategic plan survey and you can participate but you only have until August 12th would have told you earlier but uh, uh, like I say it's our first meeting uh, you can take the survey by going to www.surveymonkey.com slash s slash public plan 2012 uh, no spaces in there so it's www.surveymonkey dot com slash s slash public plan 2012 and if you want to look at the uh, plan in general uh, you can go to uh, slash slash metro transit met I'm sorry metro rail dot com slash strategic plan and uh, I had the pleasure of uh, taking a see I, I'm not a commuter anymore so uh, I had the pleasure of taking a Metro train uh, midday uh, last week uh, to, to head downtown. And uh, these were not commuters that I shared the ride with. The train was pretty full. It was loaded with uh, uh, families, mothers, brothers, sisters, you know, all kinds of folks going uh, downtown and places in between to go to uh, the parks and the events and uh, things going on. So. Metro Rail, Metro is, is definitely a commuter rail system, but I noticed that uh, when I was taking the survey, uh, the, their, their focal point is on commuters, as, as well it should be to a point, but 
that's not all they serve. So if you're a, uh, a mom, family member, you like to take, take the kids to events, uh, uh, to various places and, and, and come home safely, you might want to participate in this survey. Uh, so it's an opportunity you only have until Friday. Uh, that's what, August uh, 10th, I guess. So that's all I have, Mayor. Thank, Thank you. you. Commissioner Barnett? I have no report, Mayor. And I have nothing further except to uh, ask everyone to uh, join us at Every Day is a Sunday on, on Monday, congratulating them on 20 years of business in the village. I still can't believe it's been 20 years, but um, great, great, great business. And uh, congratulate them on, on being around for as long as they have. Um, seeing nothing else, I want to thank people for coming out tonight, and I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Uh, we're going to call the roll, please. Commissioner Barnett? Aye. Commissioner Newstead? Aye. Commissioner Rankin? Aye. Commissioner Walter? Aye. Commissioner Schnell? Aye. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.